It's been a day of arrest and, if you like, political aggrandizement because Deputy General Secretary of the National Democratic Congress, Kokwa Nido, is in police custody and has been charged with treason for comments which government says are treasonable. How did it all start? Mr. Nidoho, in an interview on an Accra-based radio station, said that President Ekufuado will be overthrown and we'll be listening to that audio but just so you know the police arrested the ndc deputy general secretary at the Accra international press center where the party was having a news conference to react to the controversial ghana u.s military cooperation agreement it was first sent to the cid headquarters accompanied by party executives and supporters and then moved to his house for a search and back to the police headquarters now we're told he's being charged with treason how will things pan out um, we've had some uh, reports from our reporters who would bring you the latest information for you tonight on PM Express. We'll also hear from his lawyer and also party executives also and get the position of other political parties, what they make of this event. Plus, will the protest still hold tomorrow? How will it look like? We have all the answers here on PM Express with me, Aisha Ibrahim. Stay on with us. Welcome back, it's PM Express, and we're talking about the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Kokwanyu Doho, who has been charged with treason. In the studio with me are two strong lawyers. First is the lawyer for uh, Kokwanyu Doho, Victor Kojoga Adawudu, and uh, also uh, lawyer Kwame Jantwa. Both of them are very experienced lawyers joining me in the studio. But along the line, we'll also be joined by Dr. Vladimir Inchidanso, who is a security expert, um, to um, dissect how party supporters and um, other party executives thronged the police station probably to interfere with uh, proceedings. We'll, all, we'll, we'll get all of that on PM Express tonight. But let me start with uh, Kojoga Adawudu. You've been with Koko since he was uh, sent to the CID headquarters. You've been up and down on this uh, whole issue. First, we're told he was charged with high treason. Now we're told he's charged with treason. How did uh, things pan out? I mean, what explanation is the police giving that led to this charge? Good evening and good evening to your listeners. Um, yes, maybe your information you had was that um, <clears throat> when the cuckoo this morning with some of the echelons of the party and other concerned citizens had a press conference at a, a press center. It was there that there was army or a team of policemen in civilian clothes that went there. And uh, when they saw him, they said he was under arrest. And said, so for what reason? Tell me what reason you think I'm under arrest. Um, because they were eminent citizen people who were at the place, they said, oh, allow us, we will come. But when we finish the program and the interview, we will be there. So I think the entrance was blocked by the police. So they so decided they to leave their you. vehicles and they walked there. A lot of them walked from the press center to the police and said, he said, we should come. So it was there they told him that he's under arrest. And for what reason? For a comment he made that there will be a coup. So that was initially that was he was told. So we were kept there. For some time, nobody was telling us anything until they came and they said that they wanted to go and search his house. Yes. We obliged them. Let's go to the house. There was nothing in the house. I think for... I would say the team that went to do the search, they were professional on this occasion. They did the cooperation. They searched nook and cranny of the house, everything, nothing was found. So we came back. It was when we came back that they decided to take our statement. So from beginning, they said uh, we were charged under the offense of causing fear and panic under section I believe one eight two. So 
It was after we've written the statement. One yes, written, of Act 29. Uh, I believe there's the cause of fear and panic. I don't want to mislead you, but let me quickly get it. Um, okay, so, so, yes. So it was then, then after we've written the statement, then he came back and said that upon consultation from the top hierarchy of the police, they feel they should charge us under high treason. So it was there we said, oh, okay. If high treason, that means we needed to change our statement. Okay. So it was there whilst we were writing again that we were charged under treason. They said it is treason, but not high treason. Okay. So we finished and we had asked that. So what is the next thing? If you look at the procedure and by law, the police are given some mandate, some power to grant bail. Okay when they look at the offense. And in this matter, we are being investigated, not that we have been charged okay. for the offense. We are being investigated. So that's an ordinary caution statement that we have written. Mm -hmm. Then I think he went, the police officer, some of them went out, came back, only to be told that the instructions from above, there will be no bail. Or they, have, they don't have instruction from the authority to grant bail. So, why? We don't work with instruction. We work with the law. Mm. The law grants you power to detain us for 48 hours or anything. So you can come and tell us that instruction. From who? From who, who is the above? Uh, that's what, we, you know, infuriated a lot of people over there that know. It should not be like this. If it is the law, you look at your service instruction. The police, they have a service instruction. When it comes, this is the service instruction. Right. So it tells you what to do. At any point as in time. As a professional police, at any point in time, yeah. your service instruction on every facet of your job as a police, it is given to you. Okay. Um, I'm sure some of them are also lettered in law. Mm -hmm. So they are lawyers. So when it comes in, they say, there's no instruction, so we are taking you. And we said, no, give us reasons. We believe that we should be told, A, B, C, D. But is it a political head saying that we should not be granted? So you weren't given reasons why no, he nobody. wasn't, he's not being granted bail? No, no, nobody told us anything. So there were some few exchanges. Um, I believe people who were there, I had some exchanges with some of the police people. And I said, look, you know what? We are citizens of this nation. You cannot, nobody, nobody can intimidate a citizen with arms or the uniform. No, 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 no. So if somebody is in uniform, it's a privilege that the state has conferred some authority on you, but it is not to intimidate and use that against a citizen. Mm. So all we needed was they grant us the bill, or they refuse us the bill. So as it is now, they still haven't granted No, no, bill. we haven't been granted bill. So. I believe it will be fair to listen to the comments that the police is um, referring to, and that has led to the charging of Koku and uh, for treason. Let's listen to that. Ultimately, they will introduce that thing. If I tell the Nano, I'm so kind So eventually, eventually, I'm telling you, somebody should tell me now, Kufado. Master, history has a very interesting way of repeating itself. Oh. On the 13th of January 1972, a certain Colonel Ignatius Kutu Achampo eh, mm -hmm. removed, led an insurrection, led a, a movement that removed the Progress Party from power. Guzman was the Prime Minister, Akufabu Sada was the ceremonial president. Somebody should tell Anaku Fabu that history has an interesting way of repeating itself. Say this, I'm telling you, history ah. has a very interesting way. Say, so, Obiba, Obiba, say, you could be one. Oh, my family, Makan, history has an interesting way of repeating itself. Because, uh, 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 President, young Timothy. No, no, but uh, General, they are okay, a very serious power. Oh, no, 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 no. Thank you, Captain. There will be a civil revolt. There will be a people's movement. Now, no, President Mahama Wapawa. Now, no, President Mahama Wapawa. Let my vote count for me, occupy Ghana, for Mother. Only President Mahama Adiaso. 
Uh, but Uma, Uma reference to Ignatius Kutu. Oh, Joshua Kambadi. Mami Juma Juma. Uma refers to Ignatius Kutu a champo. Say what Baba two a year ku fuado Papa. And you busy ya. Say his will repeat itself. And no na nyes civil revoke. And no na nyes civil revoke. General Pacho, I want to hear. I say who? Yeah. There will be a civilian coup d'état. Hey. There will be a social revolution. Hey. We are starting on Wednesday. The movement is starting on Monday, Wednesday. Civilian coup d'état. We are going to be in the same time. We are going to be in the same time. So, 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 So those were uh, the words of Koko Anyudoro and based on which the police is holding him and charging him with treason. Let me pick your thought, um, lawyer uh, Kwame Jantua. How does uh, the arrest of uh, Koko come across to you? Good evening to our viewers and good evening to counsel here and yourself. I can only take, I wasn't there, so I can only take what... Um, Koku's counsel has just said. Now, I want to be very sure. Is he being charged or is he being investigated? Which is which? He's being investigated. He's being investigated. Now, okay. if he's being investigated, he's entitled to bail. Okay. Because to charge him, you need evidence. Right. They've gone to his house. Have they found the evidence? They haven't found any evidence. So for nothing at all, once the mandatory period has passed for holding him, he must be granted bail. Look, at worst, at worst, as far as I can see, at worst, Koku was reckless in his comments. Right. At worst, he was reckless in his comments. The comments he made there was reckless. Okay. Shouldn't have even gone there. Because to some degree, he was inciting. Yes, there's a demonstration tomorrow. It's supposed to be, demonstrations in this country are supposed to be peaceful. Right. When you start on the premise he started with, you are inciting violence. Mm. Is that a cause for treason? Okay. Can you say that because he's inciting, you would say it's a cause for treason? Why do you now charge him for high treason and you drop it to treason? Okay. Now, you've been to his house, you searched, you didn't find anything. You've come back, you've dropped it. And counsel also said that they said orders from above. Orders from which above? Police hierarchy? Political hierarchy? NDC hierarchy? Mm -hmm. MPP hierarchy? The people's hierarchy? Where does that come from? From. What about what is even above uh, than the Ghana Police Service instructions? You have a code that you go by, and so far as I'm concerned, and you see that's why I keep saying that the uh, uh, the the head of the police service, the um, what is he called? Inspector General, Inspector General of, of Police, police right. should not be a political appointment. Mm. It should not be. It should come from within the ranks so that they can stand independent. Okay. The moment it becomes a political appointment, what happens? You are spoon feeding because it's the politician who gave it to you. Right. So, as I said, can this also be seen as a threat? What Kuku said, is it a threat to peace? Yes, I can see some incitement in there. Is it a threat? It could be seen as a threat. But you see, in all this, why does, why do we let America cause such problems within our own, between ourselves? Okay. And it all stems from what? This military agreement, doesn't it? Yeah. For exactly. anything at all, for anything at all, government should stand up, seeing that mayhem is causing, withdraw it for now. Withdraw it. For us to have some peace because the more it goes on the more these challenges are going to happen and it's not good for our country i don't think Ghanaians are ready for any violence in this country right. and you know looking across board a lot of Ghanaians have opposed this agreement right. and i think for me parliament didn't do a good job they didn't do a good job with the for, agreement yes for for any
anything at all, for anything at all, they should have withdrawn it and reconsidered. What actually I don't understand is that the president is who? He is head and chief of the armed forces. Right. This agreement has got to do with the armed forces. Why was he quiet? Why haven't we heard the president say anything? Perhaps the defense minister has been giving some explanations. Please, no. No. This has got to do, this is rise right head on on the president's lap. He's head of the military. Mm. And something like this, he should come and say something to the people who voted him there. But of course, to calm, um, he's also to giving calm. the mandate to the defense minister. What so has happened? Probably the what the has defense happened? minister is doing his best. What has happened? The defense minister has been talking. What has happened? What are we seeing now? If the president, you see, and I, it, it happened in John Muhammad's time. It happened in Mills's time. It happened in Kufour's time. It happened in Rawlings time. Why do we cocoon our presidents? Why do we cocoon them? When they come into power, they are there to serve us. They are support. When things like this come, we need to hear from the president. He is the head of the country. Right. He leads the country. So you are expecting the president to come I out expect, and say something? I expect him to, to at least come. Yes. He is the, you think if the president came and said, my fellow Ghanaians, yes, A, B, C, D, E is the reason why we've gone into this. I take responsibility of, you know, signing this agreement and going into partnership with the Americans because of X, Y, Z. Mm. And cite some examples that can calm the nerves of Ghanaians. Okay. To date, you haven't heard the president say anything. Okay. So, um, Laura Daudu, um, the two things that run in Okwanido's comments are, um, if I heard him right, civil coup d'etat, and he also talks about social revolution. Those are the two things that run in his, uh, his statement that has landed him in this trouble. What does the uh, Constitution say about these two things? And do these two statements warrant uh, a treason charge? Now, you see, if you look at the treason charge under the Constitution, it tells you, with your permission, if I may read, that's Article 1917. Okay. Now, it talks about subject to the clause 18 of Article 19, treason shall consist only in levying war against Ghana or assisting any state of person or inciting or conspiring with any person to levy war against Ghana okay. or in attempting by force of arms mm -hmm. or violent means to overthrow the organs of government established by or under the constitution okay. so there are some elements that when it comes to treason we should be looking for were you inciting or conspiring with any state or any person one were you levying war against ghana right you need to also see that was it by force of arms as the person has arms or any other violent means yes we all know that when it comes to coup d'etat it is always military coup d'etat that we have right. yes as you said the choice of word may not be at the, for the right purpose or to communicate that yes we want to have a social revolution that social revolution emanates because of the agreement so when we start with the press conference with demonstration, we are going to have a social revolution. There's going to be a mass movement against this agreement. I believe that if he has put his choice of words wow. Wow. properly, we wouldn't have said it. Now, what was the reference? The reference he made to Kenal Achampo, everybody knew that Kenal Achampo, it was a military coup d'etat. Right. But I think he was trying to qualify it that there will be a civil movement. Mm. I think that, yes, he was trying to make a point that we will resist this agreement any day, any time, by the choice of word at that time. But as my learned senior said, yes, we may qualify that he was inciting other people that they should do it. But has he levied any war against the state? 
Well, now, perhaps it, that's how it starts because you can. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you can never no. know the intention. Even the we devil cannot. You can know. Yes. The devil so you have to know prove the intention the, of man. So you have so to prove once that, it comes out from your mouth. Yeah, you have to prove that. But you know, nobody would want to level a war against the state and go on radio and say that this is what we are going to do. Nobody well, would want to. You want to garner support. Yes. So yes. That is the inciting that we have agreed yeah. that maybe you were inciting others. Now. You need to also get to know that what is the violent mean. We should not forget about our recent history. We saw what happened in Tunisia. It was a social revolution. It was a social demonstration which sparked the whole thing. We saw what happened in Egypt. We saw what happened in um, Burkina Faso. Right. And all this, and we even saw, so if all this led to the removal of government and others against some policies is this a coup d'etat you know so you're not trying to change the law or change the policies you are against a policy that is being made so these are the things that when it comes would we'll have to look at I think that yes uh, for me it is yes you've charged him with this you've gone wrong you've done the evidence there's nothing that you have found if what you needed. You know, the law also grants the police and others to do investigation within some time. So that is why the law in its wisdom says that if the man will stand, would always be produced, would come and cooperate with you, there is a need. We have cooperated. They work themselves to the police station. Right. So just to come and say instruction from above, not being given instruction to grant Grunching bail, bill. It smacks off, as you said, maybe you want to do the bidding of the political people mm. who put you there. Right. Now, it, that, that's why sometimes I have a little problem, because if that happens, the next political party that also comes will definitely do away with the heads it, it exactly, and bring another one. Exactly the point I'm yes. going to. Well, um, we, we don't know now. We talked about high treason. We are now talking about treason. At least the layman want to know what, what I mean, what that means and what it means to be charged with treason. I'll come back to you on that. But let me go to uh, Mr. Kwame Jantua. Already people are um, speculating and are already, you know, suspecting that there's some political witch hunt. And of course, we all remember what happened to uh, Honorable Kennedy Japan when he made a similar comment. And you know, I think it was leading up to the elections. And so do you think that this comment or what is happening right now is political witch hunt? Well, I don't see the political witch hunt in there because of the course of what has brought this about. You see, where war is concerned, it's not only guns that you can use for war. In our situation, stones, sticks, cutlasses can be tools that you can use to hurt someone. And it is tools that can bring a clash between two political rivals and spread into the society. So perhaps, what they're charging him for does not refer to this type of violence. Right. It's probably a lesser charge that he should be being charged for and not treason. Okay. Because if one person loses their life from his spoken words, he's aided and abetted and incited right. such things to happen. Do you think that um, then... Uh, when the uh, Honorable Kennedy Japan was also um, arrested for such comments, I mean, the charge was appropriate? Well, was he held for treason? I can't remember. Remind me. Exactly I can't he was so. held for treason. Yes, his, he was was more, his was more ethnic, wasn't it? Yes. 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 He was but he was held for treason. Yes, he was held for treason. Yes. What happened? They had to drop. You see, we have to get to a point where we don't find egg on the faces of our policemen when they give certain charges. Right. The police have to stand tall in all that they do. Look, they are not a police force. They are a police service. Two different things. Okay. Absolutely two different things. So whatever they do, they should stick to the law. Look, I heard a lot of beatings had gone on, even with journalists, there, right. by police people. Hot water. Why? 
Why? Because I heard we saw there were the some rubber bullets shots. even yes. that yes. were shot. Definitely so. And someone who had gone to fix some electric, the electronical stuff for one of the commanders in the police headquarters came out and was beating because he was taken as one of the, the protesters where, when he wasn't. Okay. The police should be very circumspect. And this type of, and I don't know whether the crowd was forcing to go into the police station. Mm. So why the water cannon? Well, uh, I think that uh, at a point no. the crowd w w was I wasn't charged. there, but from where I, was. I hear, I was there. there. I was there initially. The supporters were charged, and no, so I'm sure in trying to control them, and uh, I mean in in that process, all of these happened. That's what our reporters uh, said. Now, you know, I was listening to the um, uh, the uh, general secretary of the NDC this morning. And he was asked about the comments that Kukweni Leho had done. Made. Made. He clearly and indicated he that learned. that was his own private comments. Definitely, yes. His own private comments. Yeah. So you couldn't paint the NDC with that. Mm -hmm. What happened? What changed? Okay. What happened and changed that right now the NDC have taken a completely different tack? So far as I can see, if the general secretary is saying it was his private comment, then it was between his lawyer and Kuku Nida, it wasn't between anybody else. They didn't need any no. party support to be there. It was between he and his lawyer. Right, so... Um, with now, okay, the, the, the reason why maybe you find the party at Lons and others, the program they went. Okay. The, it happened the, right It at happened the right In there. Front of them. When the NDC was part of that concerned citizens or a movement against the Ghana US agreement. Right. But they didn't so they didn't, when they, they went didn't there, come and arrest him not because of that movement you were holding. They came to arrest him because yes. of the singular comments he had made. Yes. Well, well, but because they point, were there when at that arrested, point. I think the police didn't yes, even tell all, him what he had done. No, no, not that they even, they even he walked. They walked together, the national chairman, almost all the executives were at the press conference. And you know the party has already indicated that they were against or they were opposed to the signing of this agreement. Yes. So it was a press conference but, but, prelude to this. But, my but the way they came, the but, police came in to effect their arrest. They realized that no, we that could not just skip. The, so that ignited and they said, we will walk with him to the police station. So everybody walked with him from press center to the police station. Because it, it was in the process that I think the, when the media started breaking the news that he's been arrested, that people started. But the police were able, that, able to close the gate. So they were on the street. All right. They were on the street. Mine is. They that. were not within the presence of Fair the enough. police. Of the Fair, police. Enough. Okay. Fair enough. Mine is that they came specifically to arrest one person because of comments he has made and not because of the press conference you were having. Well, at, no, that, no. at that particular point, the police had not uh, told him what he did, so they just carried him that away. That was wrong. So at that, that point, it, it no, would, no, it would that be would, a big... Would, um, you see, let me, let me... The remote course was that they were planning a demonstration that would come on tomorrow. They are the key. It, this is prelude to that demonstration that will come on tomorrow. So but they didn't this come and people, arrest him because no, of the no, demonstration. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Point I'm the point that, I'm making is that because, yeah. because the people were being organized, they were organizing for tomorrow's demonstration, mm. there were people who were around. around. So it was just that they moved from the press conference and came onto the street. When the police saw that they were coming, that was not, when the, not the, first the gate time was we closed. Seen this. Even yesterday, yes. we saw similar thing in court when Dr. Okuni was sent yeah. to, uh, what was, uh, I mean, his trial began. And so it's something that is growing up um, in, in our system and something we need to check. Yeah. That's why we'll be speaking with Dr. Vladimir Nchidansu, who is a security expert, to also tell us uh, how we can control this because, of course, he's already stated that it's worrying. We'll take a break on PM Express and when we come back, we'll also look at what the NDC's position is on this arrest.
change the charges to high treason. Now they say, now they say from high treason to treason. We don't know what that one means. But whatever happens, tomorrow demonstration will happen. Well, tomorrow early in the morning from Obra Sport. And when we, we are done with the demonstration, we will by all means solidarize yeah. with our colleagues. General, I'm a little I'm curious. Sure. General, I'm a little I'm curious. Sure. You're embarking on a demonstration. You will need police protection. And here you are. We have the secured police. that police protection. Mm. If they like, they should renege on their responsibility to protect us. General, but we are he's very, very safe. He's there with our lawyers. Okay. So we will do the demonstration. After the demonstration, we would come and continue solidarizing with our... By which time, we would have known where he's being but, kept. But would you say you are disappointed with the turn of events at the moment? The turn of events at the moment? Not this moment. I'm disappointed with the type of governance in this country. Exactly. And that is why. That is why it is legitimate for every citizen who is a taxpayer to call for the government to do the right thing or quit. So it is legitimate for Kwaku to call for the, the, the quitting of this government. So because there is a social... Why not? As a legitimate citizen of this country, who is a taxpayer, he has engaged in a social contract with the government yeah. to pay his taxes, discharge his duties as a citizen, but the government has to deliver. If the government is not delivering, then the government... Knowing that the kitchen is too hot, must quit. Now, finally, finally. Kwakwenyi Doho is a, not a military man. Kwakwenyi Doho doesn't command the military. Right. So he can only convince people. And if the masses are convinced that we have a wrong government, the masses have the legitimate right to. Uh, uh, so, uh, finally, Gen I am saying that they should go and prepare for tomorrow's yes. massive action. Yes. This is the beginning. We will follow it till we secure the sovereignty of this country. So that was uh, General Mosquito, um, the, uh, John Singh Asiedun Ketia, addressing uh, supporters of the NDC there. And he says that they will continue to solidarize with their brother, Kokwanido, who is in police grace. And he says that um, tomorrow's demonstration, this has uh, even charged the people for tomorrow's demonstration. But he still continues to say that they are law-abiding citizens, and so they will ensure that they will abide by all the rules and regulations regarding the uh, demonstration. Um, Dr. Vladimir Intridanso joins us on the phone. He is a security uh, expert. Good evening to you, Doc. Many thanks for joining us on PM Express. Good evening. Doc, uh, we, had, we all heard the comment from uh, the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Kwakwa Nido, and that has landed him into this trouble. Um, what do you make of his arrest? Well, uh, it's a very unfortunate situation because um, if we really want to consolidate our democracy, there's no other way to go. We've had instances in the past where such utterances have landed people in trouble, and we reached there because we are very indisciplined where our governance system is concerned. We just believe that when your government is not in power, you begin to say whatever you want, and when your government is in power, so you, you have people who say whatever they want. I believe we need to be maturing in our democracy. Uh, if we are not going to do that, then I believe that our democracy is going back for people going forward. So, um, Doc, should we be worried that we are currently experiencing an era where politicians are accused of wrongdoing and when the law is taking its course, they seem to be interfering with uh, the procedure? Yes, we should be. We should be extremely worried. Uh, uh, as usual, I've been writing articles against uh, such situations where I named one of my articles, Deterring Democracy in Ghana. I was terrified and awed when... Uh, the law was trying to take its own course, and you have politicians, well-respected politicians, ministers of state, taking their pens and demonstrably, demonstrably uh, I mean, showing to all of us uh, the defiance by signing a petition to the, the former president. So where are we going? What about government in a certain typical village who, who steals some purple or some orange or some bananas just because he's hungry? Uh, is there anybody to sign a petition to the government? But when we create, you know, people who really don't, do not want the peace, uh, 
misbehave just because they belong to a certain political party. Uh, they will have a right to do what they want. I mean, we, we, we need to get out of this, and because of this discipline. And again, as I've already said, uh, much of the time it is because there is a lack of constitutionalism in this country. There is lack of institutionalism. We don't respect our constitution, and we don't respect our institutions. When you do this to these, these things, institutionalism and constitutionalism, democracy is derailed. And we should be very, very, very careful. Because other than that, politics interferes in the running of the country democratically. Doc, uh, we saw this yesterday. Where we, we saw it at the court when Dr. Opuni was uh, in court for trial. We've seen it today. It doesn't look like it's ending anytime soon. How do we nip this in the bud? We really have to allow the institutions of state to work the way they should work according to the remit of the Constitution. I've always said it a million times. You have a politician being, being sent to court and it turns political. And so I'm saying, what about that family man in the speech? Who supports him? Fine, you could go there and be part of the court. Uh, there are some people who have made it their, whatever it is to be at the court always, either they are studying or whatever it is. Or they are, they are supporting or they are giving some kind of moral support to, 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 to their, their friends. But then it shouldn't turn into a political rally. It shouldn't turn into a kind of demonstration that shows that um, crime is being politicized, that crime has gotten political color. If it were the other side, then no problem. Or if the person doesn't belong to it, then no problem. We need to nip in, it in the bud through institutionalism, unfortunately. Most of our institutions uh, begin to play the political card also. I give several examples some time back. My own very good friend, Takushikata, for example, was arrested in, in the church when I think government has not asked the BNI to do so. My question is, when, if it is true that Takushikata had uh, committed some crime, when he was committing the crime, when his government was in power, why did the same BNI not take Takushikata at the time? Now, fast forward. My friend again, Asabi, when he was in power, why did the BNI not pick him? But he waited until the government, the NPP was uh, over, and then they picked him at the airport. This doesn't go well for institutionalism. The institutions of state must work according to the remit of the period. If I am a thief, that's me now. Please pick me. Don't wait until my government is out of power. Before so you pick me. The institutions of state must work neutral. They be neutral. If they do that, then these things cannot happen. All right. Many thanks to Dr. Vladimir Chidan. So is a security yeah, aspect, and he says that crime must be treated as crime. It must not be painted with political colors. Back to the studio, uh, uh, lawyer Daudu. Um, we talked about high treason. We talked about treason. But before we even attempt to uh, understand what that means, where is your client? Do you know where he is? Oh, well, I believe my client was handed over to the BNI. So he's in custody, and I'm sure with the BNI. After we will wait patiently and see what, when the instruction is ready for him to be granted bail from the above, from the above or not, then we can see what the law, the remedy that we can pursue. But of course, uh, according to the law, he cannot see, be there for more than forty-eight what, hours. What, what, what makes me smell some elephant in this matter <laughs> is that. You see, when we were asking the police, they should give us the exact charge. Why we've been invited. You know, earlier on, the Minister of Information said that this is treasonable offense, we should do this. So we were asking, what is the charge? They couldn't even tell us what was the charge. Mm -hmm. Until we had to go for the search, came back, they said, causing panic. This is an asset. I said, okay, we read. So what does it tell you? And, you know, they repeated the same thing as that was said, that he made a statement, it's treasonable charge, and this, this. And I said, what statement? Because my client, in his duties, daily duty, he grants interview. He makes statement. So which particular statement are you talking about? Mm. They could not even tell us until they said, the statement was made yesterday. So by treason, what right. do they mean? What, what does the law say about treason? No, no. Treason actually means that you want to levy war against the state. Okay. You are conniving with another state. You want to use force of arm. You are inciting others 
or assisting that state to make sure that you overthrow or remove the organs of government. Okay. So remove parliament, overthrow the constitution, that is the law okay. and some policies. So what's so, the difference between high treason and treason? High treason uses the exact word that you overthrow. Okay. When you overthrow or abrogate the constitution. Okay. It's just like, so that especially tells you about military coup d'etat. But if somebody is successful in high treason, <laughs> no, no, because well, when be normally be arrested because he's already over no, no, no. The Even the same, the same constitution tells us that if anybody comes and overthrows the government or abrogates the constitution, any counter coup d'etat overthrowing those people, it is right. It is legitimate. Okay. You cannot be punished for that. Okay. The Constitution gives us that power. So if anybody comes through an illegitimate manner and overthrows, we as citizens have the right to overthrow such a person. Right. And it is perfect in accordance with the Constitution. May I ask a question? So I May I ask yeah. a question? Right. Does the media have any responsibility with this interview that they had they did? Which of the interviews? The Koko Anidoho's interview this Does morning. the media have any responsibility? Yes. yes. Well, how do you mean by that? Would, would In it, checking and guarding yes, what people if say? It, if it so happened that when he made these statements, the host who was hosting the program stopped him and walked him out of the the, the the studio. I think that the host was also trying to caution him that what you are saying is dangerous. Yes, so what you're saying is dangerous. Mm. End the interview. Okay. End the interview. Don't go ahead and ask further questions. Okay. Because you know what that implication is as a media person. Right. You know how that can incite others. Mm. So any politician who comes and sits on your media platform mm. and says certain things that are even deemed reckless. Mm. Walk him out. Definitely. I mean, that's Walk what the code of conduct says. Yes, but yeah. we are not but practicing it today with our media. Of course. Um, I can't speak for all the media houses. I can speak for multimedia. And again, I think I heard the journalist or the presenter cautioning him that hey, I said, okay, there. it's serious, it's dangerous. And he, he kept he could going have said, on he and could on. Have said more. Right. You could have said more. So I somehow okay, dangerous. We don't know at what point. Yeah, yeah, twasso crab him. Right. Yeah, jijiso. Yeah, chaso. So, looking at treason, what comes with treason? If indeed you're charged with treason, death. Death. Yeah, you suffer. That's the penalty. Yes. High treason, you suffer death. death. You suffer death. Wow. We'll take we saw it with the eight okay. generals, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yes. Mm. It's death. Okay, we'll come back after this break and look at what next for Koko Anido, uh, who is currently with the BNI. Welcome back to PM Express. Uh, let me go straight to uh, lawyer Dawudu. What next for Koko Anido? We know he's with the BNI now, and we also know the police cannot keep him for 48 hours, but we know that police is not granting him bail. Yes, we will allow the law to take its own course. Um, if they decide that they will keep him over 48 hours, the law tells us what to do. Um, what does the law say? Oh, the law, we have to go to court. To the court. law says that they have to take us to court. If they want to keep him over 48 hours, they have to go to the court. And seek. if the court yeah. seek the court, that seek we the want court, to detain yeah. him and do investigation. If they, what they present before the court, the court is satisfied, the court would. If the court is not satisfied, and the court has the discretion to grant so, bail. Yeah. Um, now, no, briefly, um, we're running out of time. How do we guard against some of these uh, comments you have said is reckless? Briefly, politicians we'll run out of time. Politicians should Let stop talking the way they talk. They should stop it. It doesn't help us. Look, we have important things to take care of in this country than to make, than such, to make reckless. such reckless comments. And uh, me, I always say the media has a responsibility to stop politicians. From talking the way they talk sometimes. The politicians also must be responsible. Uh, Ms. Adaudu, yes, finally, I'm, you finally I'll say that. To make your point. Yes, yes, Koku's <laughs> spirit will be with the people to demonstrate tomorrow. He has been an organizer. Although he might not be there physically, but I'm sure that with the demonstration with 
it will come on and it will be massive. So it, it's just started. Uh, Koku is not sleeping in his house tonight. But what happened to him next, you just heard from his lawyer. We'll follow it to the last minute and we'll uh, update our viewers on all of this. My name is Aisha Brahmini. Thanks for watching. Good evening.